Hello, uh, I'm Dennis. Uh, like, like they said, uh, this is my first talk tonight. Uh, I want to talk to you about profiling. Um, who here uh, has heard about profiling before? Quite a bit. Who uses profiling on a regular basis? Somebody uh, using it outside of development, but for example in staging or production? Nice. I'd like to talk to you afterwards. I'd, uh, I'd love to hear the stories about that. <laughs> um, so my talk is about profiling. Uh, first question is, what is profiling? Uh, profiling is, the, is a, the definition of it is a form of uh, dynamic analysis uh, that measures, for example, space and memory, time complexity of a program. This is the Wikipedia uh, quote, by the way. Uh, of a program, the usage uh, of a particular instructions uh, or the frequency and duration of function calls. More, uh, most commonly, profiling uh, information serves to aid program optimization. So, um, dynamic program analysis, uh, what can we do with that? Yeah, well, let's first uh, look at the counterpart, and that is static uh, analysis. Who here knows uh, or uses static analysis? It's usually uh, used in a build, uh, build development. It's the analysis uh, uh, basically about uh, the code itself, uh, how it's structured, uh, uh, how it's formed, uh, certain statistics run upon it. Uh, and these are some of the tools you may have uh, in your automated uh, build setup. Uh, like mass detector, uh, uh, copy-paste detector, and they just analyze the code and uh, see what, uh, uh, how the code, uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, does statistically. But um, these tools are only uh, uh, analyze how your code is structured, now ho not how it behaves. And for dynamic analysis, the definition is uh, that it's performed on a real or virtual processor. Uh, they must be uh, effective and they must be tested on uh, uh, execution itself. Uh, a few definitions uh, used with uh, uh, profiling is a call stack, which is a list of um, uh, uh, functions in, with in the order that they are uh, performed. Um, a call graph is the same, but uh, more in a structured way. You have uh, notes uh, which reference to another note, and you can see graphically how your code is uh, flowing through it uh, with each request. So the profiling data is usually the data gathered with the profiler, uh, and then can include memory and CPU statistics about that. But why? Uh, there are a few reasons. If your application is performing slow, you want to uh, focus on uh, 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 limiting the CPU uh, performance of it. If it uses too much CPU, if you have like uh, infinite loops, they cost a lot of CPU. Uh, and if you don't know where it is, if it just happens once every uh, such request, you want to see that. Same counts for memory, uh, I.O. and seeing how much functions are called how often. Um, yeah, usually functions like in array can be called recursively or um, a lot. And if you don't know that about your application, it it can be uh, somewhat of a problem. Uh, and using profiling, we want to detect that. So we want to gain insight uh, of the black box that is the application. What, what kind of reasons do we have for that? Uh, well, we live in a digital age. Uh, usually when uh, somebody is in line or in front of a traffic light, you have to wait. And nowadays, people don't like waiting. Um, so we want everything instantly. And according to a, to a case study, uh, more than half uh, of the online shoppers in the US claim that if the site is too slow, they will not do a purchase. Same counts for um, uh, everything. If you, if you can't reach the information fast enough because the page keeps loading, it's going to uh, 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 yeah, um, uh, get customers away. Uh, and nowadays, search engine indexing also accounts for page load. Uh, Google has claimed that they uh, use it for their uh, page rank. By the way, um, I've included a few, a few links below. Uh, this these slides will be online. Um, every, everything what that is a link uh, references to where I got the information. So if you're interested, you can always uh, take the slides, click on it, and uh, get more information about that. Uh, but warning. Um, it's uh, you don't want to use profiling uh, for everything you build from the from the ground up. Uh, if you're building uh, <coughs> because uh, you want to be performant, you're uh, optimizing uh, prematurely, and you should just write your code as usual. And if it doesn't perform right, use profiling to fix that. So 
because of issues. Uh, yeah, could be uh, everything from network slowdown, uh, data uh, uh, slowdown, external resources, or bad code. So um, when we look into the application, we see every function uh, uh, that is being called. Uh, but we can't call for uh, if, a, if a disk is slow. Uh, when you're writing a file, you see, oh, this function is slow. Maybe I should replace it with something else. That isn't always the case. There are more tools about it, uh, which you can uh, uh, monitor your systems uh, for I.O. performance, etc. But usually, when you use those kinds of tools, the application is still a black box. And profiling is just an addition to uh, those uh, uh, statistics if you want to see where your problem is. Uh, you have active versus passive pro uh, profiling. Uh, and an active profiler is used to, during development. It gathers a lot of information. Um, uh, the, the performance impact is bigger. Uh, page loads are slower. But you, if, you, if you really want to know how your page load is going through your code and want to know every detail of it, you can use an active profiler, uh, which should not be used in production. Uh, an example of that is, is Xdebug, which is quite nice if you already have that on your uh, development setup. On the other hand, a passive profiler uh, is minimal impact on performance. Um, I don't have real numbers about that, but uh, it's it's a lot less. And well, I just heard some people use profiling in production, possibly with, uh, well, well, most likely with passive profilers. Uh, so a few examples are XHProf, New Relic, and uh, Blackfire. Uh, I think New Relic and Blackfire also use uh, uh, a tool which I mention later on uh, for their uh, for their profiling. So Xdebug. Uh, it generates cache grind files. Uh, if ev anyone has ever worked with uh, C, you can use file grind to debug uh, your, your code and uh, generate uh, cache grind files from it. Uh, you have uh, GUIs like uh, kcache grind uh, to analyze those statistics. They're relatively big in size. Uh, because it's an active profiler, it gathers mu much more info. And uh, as a, devel uh, a developer tool for breakpoints and debugging, it's, it's nice if you have both installed already. Um, to enable xdebug profiling, it's just a few lines in the php.ini. You enable it, you set a uh, path in your file system where to uh, store your uh, snapshots, how it, how it calls its profiles, every page load it does, uh, and that it's enabled. And uh, cache grind looks a bit like this. You have a whole uh, overview of uh, how much uh, of your resources your code is using. And there's also settings for PHP Storm where you can use it to uh, run your code uh, through Xdebug Profiler to enable it uh, for, for each run. And you can select the cache grind functions to get a nice overview of uh, how much time uh, and its own time uh, and an amount of calls are being uh, called through those uh, files and functions. Also, also here about uh, string replace uh, has eight percent of the time and is called twice, which is nice to know. If the amounts are higher, you can think, oh, I might have a problem here. So, XHProf is another tool. Um, it's developed by Facebook and released in open source in 2009. It's a passive profiler, uh, lightweight on profiling data, uh, on a performance hit. Uh, and it uses a web GUI for reviewing and comparing data, li just like cache grind, but in a web interface. Uh, installation is uh, uh, apt-get, brew, install. For Windows, you can download the DLL or um, just build it. Uh, don't forget to restart if you're running through a web browser. H has happened before. Sometimes I forget about it. And well, it's just a tip. Um, so WordPress example, I took just a, a regular WordPress example. I tried looking up for frameworks, but uh, some example apps, but I thought WordPress is, is nice. This is the index.php uh, with just uh, XHProf enable with CPU and memory flags. Uh, disabling it gets the data after it. This does everything that WordPress does as the bootstrap. And I include the, the libraries to save it where the uh, GUI expects it to be. So uh, they have released a, li a library to uh, persist those uh, profiling, to persist that profiling data. Uh, so, you have a call stack, I've mentioned it before. This is the uh, viewer that XHProf uses. Uh, you can see all the functions underneath here with the amount of calls, uh, percentage, uh, and uh, wall, wall time is uh, a term uh, to describe the time on the clock, so the actual time it, uh, it needs. Um, 
and you have the CPU percentages, memory usage percentages, and you can uh, uh, order the table uh, according to them uh, to see where your problem uh, lies within that run. You also see a nice button here to view the full call graph, and that looks a bit like this. Okay. I can imagine you can't read it, so I've magnified it a little bit, but the big thing to see here is that it has a lot of functions, which is fine, but there are a few yellow ones which are, which are okay-ish, but uh, being being run uh, quite a bit, and the red ones may have may maybe uh, points where we can we have to worry about it. So I've zoomed a few in. One is apply filters with 20, uh, 2588 calls. Just a regular hello world WordPress. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah, they might could do some optimization uh, in there, but. You'll, you, in every application you run, you have the red blocks. It's just a matter of time, uh, just a matter of, uh, do I want to improve on this? Is this uh, a choice I, I made uh, on purpose? Um, it's just uh, an insight. You don't necessarily have to uh, get, get rid of all the red blocks, uh, as long as you know that they're there. And another one is, for example, a MySQL, uh, MySQL I query, uh, which can indicate that the, the connection to the database server takes longer than normal. Uh, so that's what I was talking about before, the I.O. Uh, it's not necessarily that uh, this function is called a lot, because it's called 26 times, which is OK. Um, but it can be that the database server is slow in performance or the network throughput or uh, something like that. But it's still red. So those are things you, you have to account for uh, if you're looking at uh, call graphs. So some useful tools with XHProf are a few helpers for the uh, Chrome and Firefox. Uh, what they do is just add a button, and they set the cookie to one. So if you uh, use the, the bootstrap code and uh, put an if around it, if the cookie profile is one, you can just run your website as, uh, as normal and uh, profile every page load that you wish just by enabling and disabling it in the browser, which is a really nice feature, I think. Uh, XH GUI is uh, uh, not from, from Facebook or within uh, the library that they released. Uh, it's a different project. It's a web front end uh, to centralize all the prof profile data. Uh, it requires MongoDB, so you have to uh, set it up that all the profiling data gets persisted to MongoDB, so XHGUI can run on top of that. Uh, but there are tutorials about that, and they are in the slides. Uh, I have uh, interesting links at the end where it is. Uh, so if you're interested in that, you can follow it. Uh, it shows uh, call, uh, call stacks, call graphs, and it can compare different runs. So if you have made an improvement, uh, you can compare the two and see uh, like a diff uh, on which it was improved. So this is what it looks like. Um, you just have the, the, the normal uh, wall statistics uh, with graphs and every function call made. Uh, a general overview about it with uh, with graphs, which which is a bit better than the the GUI that Facebook released. Um, you can uh, compare them, uh, compare them with all the runs uh, it knows from before, uh, because it's just the MongoDB database. So you don't have to uh, throw anything away. It's just you can compare it with every version, uh, and you can see the difference between the base and the head and the difference in percentage, which is actually pretty nice. And this is what the call call, uh, call graph should it be. Uh, the call graph looks like in XH GUI. So um, I've made uh, my own uh, library for it because um, I was at work, um, and a colleague of mine had a page which was lo loading really slow. Uh, it was in a CMS. Uh, and he, th he said, OK, I have no idea where this is coming from. I might have to binary search so or something. And I told him about uh, XHprof. Uh, he didn't know about that. Uh, so we set it up. And it turned out that it was a bug which was fixed half a year ago. And everybody claimed it was already fixed. But with a uh, uh, wrong merge, that specific commit uh, was lost. <laughs> So it was still the same issue, and it was that uh, for every page in the in the sitemap generator, uh, it didn't ask well query. So uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, luckily only in the CMS and not on the on the real page. But yeah, it it was it was quite painful that it took so it took so long. And yeah, no, I fixed that. But if you have tools like this, you can you can see for sure. You don't have to binary search. Oh, this takes longer. This takes longer. It's it's uh, so I thought uh, yeah I, I looked up the uh, XH uh, 
uh, Prof Library from Facebook. It's a bit of a spaghetti code, uh, I must say. And I was like, okay, this is this is difficult to set up. Uh, I have to include a, maybe a header file uh, to, in to be included with every PHP run uh, and a footer file to disable it and s store it somewhere. So I made a library uh, for it, which is just available through Composer. Um, and you can install it, and you can, uh, and it has uh, these advantages. Just focus on XHProf. Uh, has multiple uh, persistence layers uh, for memory, uh, file system, ZenDB adapter, and I'm working on the MongoDB implementation um, because because of uh, XH GUI. Uh, it's available on Composer packages, fully object oriented. Uh, I tried my uh, unit testing and. Uh, uh, code coverage uh, uh, on it because it has no real deadline, so I was <laughs> happy to happy to work that through, and uh, it was a nice uh, learning school. Uh <coughs> Sorry. So it's. I wanted to have it easy, so I com use it uh, use Composer to install it, uh, instantiate a new profiler, start it, and view the data with uh, print error uh, when it stopped. Uh, the normal code should be in between there. Um, I have multiple persistence handlers in there, uh, which you can attach so you can store the uh, things to the file system, the fly system. I see you looking. Woo. <laughs> um, that's also what I was mentioning you about, about the code coverage uh, uh, using my implementation. <coughs> um, so it's it's just a library. Uh, use it, take a look at it if you like. Um, and uh, for the future, um, I, I think uh, profiling should be uh, should go to to the next stuff. Uh, enabling it on production with uh, sampling. Uh, aggregating all profiles to a centralized machine or cluster. Uh, so if you have it running on production, uh, it doesn't have much overhead. Uh, uh, you can you can centralize it. You can have like XH GUI on top of it. Uh, uh, view the differences. Uh, track maybe uh, which branches on on an acceptance machine uh, uh, there are or on production. If you integrate it in continuous deployment uh, for an uh, acceptance uh, uh, environment. Uh, Alert when uh, when when they surpass a, a certain threshold when the differences are too high. For example, if your memory doubles after the the patch you made and you're trying to roll it out, it should be uh, it should alarm you about it because it's could be something you want to know. Um, I was also thinking about codeception integration. Everybody knows what codeception is or doesn't or raise hands. It's it's actually. Uh, BDD tool, which is uh, business-driven development, so you can you can uh, mm. uh, specify a certain scenario. I am on uh, a certain page. I click this button. I want to see this fields, and if I fill this in and I click on accept, it goes to the next page. And you can just—it's sort of a unit test for the for the whole business use case. So what you can do, uh, in my idea, is uh, find business use cases that are slow. Um, by running all the tests, uh, profiling them, uh, and ordering them by which ones are the slowest, and you can determine if that business use case is important to you. You might want to speed it up, and you have a nice uh, uh, case uh, to the to the management to say, "I want to spend time on this. This is important. This can uh, 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 cost us customers." Um, so yeah, it's also focused on the customer's uh, emulated experience because it tests how long things uh, run and. Uh, how fast the page starts loading, etc. So, yeah, um, those are some ideas. Um, I've been going quite fast, so actually, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For me, it's not completely. I use K, uh, Xdebug to debug yeah. some of my pages. Yeah. But I use it as an active profiler. Yes, it is. I don't completely understand the difference between an active and a passive. Profiler. Why should I use a passive profiler in production? Because if I use an active profiler, it gets my pages like really slow. Mm -hmm. What does a passive profiler does not execute what an active profiler does? So uh, the difference yeah. between the two is not clear to me. Yeah, I, d I don't know uh, exactly uh, in, in depth, but it generates much more data in which you can see a much more detailed view. 
well, with a pass profiler, uh, it may be uh, sufficient uh, of enough information to just look where the problems are. Uh, while in development, you might want to dig it in uh, uh, real deep. With a, with a passive profiler, it's uh, normally only the function calls with how many times it's called and what memory it has. Uh, could be sufficient for uh, for that. So those are two different use cases. But um, if if anybody re really knows what the real difference is, uh, well, I debug can actually set breakpoints. Yes, but that's prof can, so. uh, yes, but that's a different part. What does that to my performance? Because if I do an X debug F5 and I see my page loading. Xdebug yeah. right. hooks into the engine a lot deeper and more often than the passive profile. For example, New Relic costs about uh, two to five percent of every request. Where two to five percent? Yeah, where uh, in, in response times. Where uh, uh, Xdebug will cost you to sixty to seventy percent yeah. mm. when enabled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's why you never want to run Xdebug no, sure. on production. Yeah. And XHProf costs about to the five percent as well, because they don't hook into the engine as deeply as uh, Xdebug does, because there's Xdebug's everywhere, mm. right. and the passive profiler isn't. Right. Usually, you just get the the uh, 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 function calls, the times the function was called, and the amount of time it took in total, yeah. a, a, in a certain order, and you might even get memory usage per call, but that's that depends on the passive profiler you're using. Yeah, you can also uh, set it up to to measure the CPU and memory uh, 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 statistics. But if you don't, if you just want to know which functions are called in which order uh, and how many times, uh, I, I can imagine it's even more lighter than than gathering the CPU and memory statistics. But if you used in production, uh, it doesn't o only tell you the performance of your application. It tells you a lot more things you, you set a black box because yeah. everybody writes code and you don't know how often Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah. Li like I said, normally you gather uh, uh, graphs from like memory uh, usage, and if you see a memory spike, uh, you can look up in your in your profiles, uh, which you can set at a certain sampling rate. You so you can say, okay, I have a very busy website, so I don't want every run to be profiled. I want only one in like ten thousand calls profiled. Uh, you still have a lot of a lot of data, like. Uh, uh, maybe 100 a minute or something. Um, so you can, can look the time frame in the, in the spike and compare it with what code was actually run there and gain insight. So yeah, I, th I think that's a, nice, that's a nice tool. And that's also why I was talking about uh, using it in the, in the continuous delivery street, because you can, uh, you can see what changes uh, in, in, in branches cause more overhead or uh, fi uh, fixes it more. I think that's a missing part in, in the whole Street that we are using, because else uh, it can it can like uh, schedule things uh, and 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 only hit hit it later or invalidate caching cause a caching stampede or something something like that and uh, you wouldn't know because the code reviews only go so far or somebody could look over it or so it's a nice tool to have in addition. Of course. What problems did you solve at Um Well. I've been trying to do a talk, uh, just figuring about a subject. Uh, the case I was uh, mentioning was uh, that I that I helped a colleague gain insight in uh, what was what was slow about that. Yeah. Uh, we don't run it in oh, production. The best stuff was from trans IP. Yeah, yeah, that was from a colleague of mine. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to wait until you need it. I mean, you can use it all the time to analyze your uh, behavior and performance. It's not like you have to wait until you find a, a certain mm -hmm. bottleneck. I understand, but it's, ni it's nice to know that, that, it, that, that you gain something with, with using it. Yeah, yeah. At, least, at least you gain insight, but we use it on a daily basis well, as well. And, and as soon as we see something going up after a release, we immediately start figuring out from, hey, what did we release, what code did we change, why is it going up? Uh, so we go back and check our code and, and refactor it. So mm -hmm. yeah. We don't get uh, ongoing process. Do this soon enough to yeah. do the pitch production if you use it. Yeah, it's part of your process. Yeah.
and it's also scaling. Uh, yeah. If you have a small customer with little data, huh? or yeah. if a system with little well, yeah, invoices, for example, and you grow and grow, what actually takes a lot of time? I mean, suddenly a page stops working because, well, yeah, you have too much data. And maybe it's your ORM, which just takes 100,000 calls. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and yeah. yeah, well, maybe 1,000 database, database queries <laughs> just a little bit too much in a simple page load. Yeah. So it's, it's not only developers. We, we just upgraded MongoDB, and it uh, took 150% uh, more resources than before. And we, 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 shouldn't, uh, we wouldn't have noticed it, but we used New Relic, so we saw the uh, point of view. Mm -hmm. And it was not about the developers. It was the system admin who upgraded it, and he forgot one line in the config file. <laughs> oh, wow. We had a huge leakage in memory usage uh, because a particular version of PHP running on our servers, on our production servers, uh, didn't handle the closure memory re release properly. So we actually had to refactor all that code to not use one of these functions. Hmm. Also interesting, uh, dev environments that are slow. Uh, one of our results was. was well, always first in the host file over uh, the result file, so uh, I was always got used first, and it was actually eight milliseconds delay instead of one yeah. on the other resolver. So even those kind of things you can actually find with. Yeah, it, m it may not even be the, the the real function overhead because using one function in favor of another or rewriting your code, but indeed the external resources which yeah. you which you don't measure in development. There's, yeah, there's sure. one caveat to the whole profiling is that you easily lead into micro optimization. Yeah. Like rewriting for each loop into array maps, which are in fact slower and all that. Yeah. So one of my developers spent weeks rewriting, like, well, it wasn't weeks, but it was a week, <laughs> <laughs> writing a simple method into the, like, what he thought was the way to go because it mm -hmm. was all hip and happening with the new array functions and closures and whatnot. But it ended up being slower, and he only found out after he was all finished and after he did profiling in production, and then he had to refer to it all. <laughs> <laughs> it does lead to micro optimization. Yeah, that's micro optimization. That's why I put the slide in there to to don't <laughs> don't optimize uh, prematurely. If uh, only only use uh, well, you can have it running all the time, but only if if you're having problems, you can you can gain insight of what is actually happening. Uh, and for example, the the, the codeception integration. If you, it's it's nice to know uh, what uh, uh, how how your business use cases are performing because that's where you make your money. Yeah. Mm, sorry. Yeah. Uh, looking into that, how do you sell this management? Like, let's say your page takes a second to load. Yeah. How like management doesn't have money on that, but mm -hmm. if you and you can, can't promise them anything. You can just say, well, I can profile it, and probably I can make it faster, but I don't know how long it takes, and mm -hmm. I don't know how much money extra it'll make you. So how do you go about that? How do you, mm. you, you profile it before you sell it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just profile yeah. it, and the fix, okay. you, s you sell it with it's the data which, uh, which you gather. Okay, but you cannot end up in things like, oh, I've been optimizing this for a week and it's better the way it was. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's the example of how not to do it. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's a good example because you know that it isn't better because you measured it. Else it was like, this is the way to go, I fix it, commit it, you put it into the worse. code, but you never know that it's actually <laughs> slower because you never measure it. So, okay. on this talk about optimization, you don't have to do it in hindsight because it's, you know, you have a bottleneck, you have to do it like preemptively to make sure, like you don't go around uh, writing code that does uh, for each loop and then a query in it and then do like thousands of queries to the database because you know that's not right, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you don't do that. But, is there a rule? It's not a rule. Thanks. It's these kind of pre-optimizations that you, you have to be, you know, conscious of as a developer. You don't know these unless you have some kind of measuring tool, and this is the tools that provide you those measurements, basically. And then if you want to sell it to business, there are standardized uh, 
search engines, they all um, <laughs> had a period where they experimented with this and they put like a you sleep in their process somewhere to uh, uh, do a segmented yeah. slowdown of their search results. And Google had, I think, for a 100 millisecond slowdown, they had 20% um, uh, no 5% uh, less sales for or, or, uh, conversion rate for ads. Mm -hmm. And if you take that onto a Google scale, like that 5% is fucking enormous. Yeah. So then it's easy to sell to to business because it will cost them money. Let's talk about money. I should be honest, there are pages which take three to four seconds to run. Yeah. If you can improve that to, let's say, 200 milliseconds, you don't have to sell that to management. Management will buy it and will see what that delivers. And if you're already serving pages at two or three hundred milliseconds, uh, you, you hook in an, an active profiling and you bring that down by 10%, no one cares. Hmm. That's nice for the internal getting your code to a higher standard. But really, if you experience slow load times, like one mm -hmm. second on a CMS, that's awful for yeah. people who have to work with it. Next, next to loading all the images, etc. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So if you uh, gain a performance gift there from, from one second to 200 milliseconds, you yeah. have some, in my opinion. And also, one remark, in, in my opinion, uh, passive growth by one, I call it monitor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> gathering metrics on how your application is performing in yeah. production as a kind of monitor. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that is really looking what is my code doing, how is hmm. it behaving. Yeah, I was, I was, that's why I mentioned the, the, the monitoring. You have all the statistics, but your application is still a black box yeah. if you don't use tools like this. You only see my application takes up so many, so much memory or so much CPU power, and you don't know what is happening in, yeah, inside. But, but for example, New Relic with, with the PHP mm -hmm. profiling engine, we don't use it for profiling. We use it to detect uh, code smell or problem. In hmm. Yeah. Yeah? I see in other business cases that uh, we have kind of some legacy code in our application and we want to get rid of it. And yeah. Everybody wants it, everybody wants that. But I think with profiling with your story, I think that you can detect how many times that legacy is called. Because we actually don't quite know how many times is it being called actually. And what we were figuring out, we could use a logger to just put a log on every point when a function gets called, but with a profiler, yeah. that's already done for you, yeah. right? Is, is, is it is. another business case, not only for performance, but how to get rid of legacy code, you can use a profiler. It, it is, but I don't think management really sees legacy code as, as a problem. They don't really know. They know it, it runs, and if it runs slow, and if it causes a problem for you, you should fix it if it's legacy or not. But yeah, in, indeed, for, for legacy where you don't know where all the code is going, uh, for developers, it's great, I think. Actually, quick question. Uh, do yeah? you mean how many times it's being used within the code, or how many times that thing is still being accessed? Well. If you have uh, some legacy code, you sometimes see some functions and you think, oh, well, can I just remove them? <laughs> 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 I think, I think there's a somewhere and see, yeah. well, <laughs> there hasn't <laughs> been any calls <laughs> to it. Yeah. Uh, so, a, so a, a better solution for that, instead of profiling, yes. uh, which yes. basically inspects the running of your code, is you do static analysis. I mean, mm. if the function yeah. name is not anywhere in your code, it's not being called. <laughs> so static oh. analysis, oh. that's oh. not true. Oh. <laughs> 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 just being, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 <laughs> it, <laughs> but my feeling is that dynamic analysis is you can catch most of the cases with, with yes. static analysis, okay. mm. uh, and then you're going to catch some of them with profiling if you have some really funky code, which is usually what legacy code is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You're right. But, but static analysis will give you like the, the first wave of things to remove, yeah. and then the, the, the profiling might give you a chance to find out some hidden uses and then wipe those out. But you're going to get more performance out of doing this as a, as a job if you start with, with static. You have to help me now because... Um <laughs> 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 <laughs>
it's usually also not tested. Yes. It's just code that has been made five years ago, Absolutely. and it's not tested. So is the static code analysis helping there? Yeah, you can. Yeah, because it doesn't care how good your code is; it will just tell you how bad it is. Usually, it runs on anything, right? So if you use yeah, if you use tools like a PHP Mess Detector, or even if you just run PHP Storm. And you mm. pipe your code in there and you say, how many times is this used? It can usually figure it out. Yeah. And you can, you can get scared of the copy-paste detector because you see everything all over the place. I think, I think both are nice to have. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure there are people in the room with experience if you want to call them into your company and help. It's always a good thing. Consultants. What I did notice with legacy code is, well, you make fixes and you make another function call, and in well, another piece of code you make another function call, and suddenly you have another 150,000 function calls. Suddenly because you just apply fixes to some edge cases in legacy code, and well, yeah, you with uh, passive uh, profiling you actually can detect those regressions in well, speed. Well, it depends what really bugs you about the legacy code. Are you do you want to remove the parts that don't perform? Do you want to remove the parts that are giving you a hard maintenance? Mm. It's a completely different thing. There's productivity, mm. developer productivity, and then there's performance, and they usually walk on different ends of the, you know, the stick. So mm -hmm. that's what you need to think. What do you want? Do you want to be able to, you know, deliver more features faster without everything going down, or is is is, is performance the only thing you're worried about? And guess what? Management wants performance. We mm. want maintenance, mm. and it's our job to sell them maintenance without them worrying too much about the performance. Yes. Yeah, they. they <laughs> well, no, my management doesn't do that. <laughs> my manager's not allowed to do anything. <laughs> Can you give a talk oh. on that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my manager told me. <laughs> torture. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. You have not explained about uh, request profiling. But how about Sorry about uh, request requests? Profile. Yeah. Profiling. But uh, what about PHP CLI workers? Um, Is well, the same can you, uh, profile in the same way. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, gu I guess so. Uh, because you just uh, start a profiler, stop it, and mm -hmm. put the data somewhere. So if it's a CLI script or a web interface, that uh, doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's just somewhere where you where you, you can even you can even have if you have a, a function which calls other functions or is recursive, you can start a profiler inside of there and end it inside of there and only have the contained yeah. piece of code uh, analyzed. It's a benchmark. Yeah, it's it can be can be used as a benchmark. Yes. You can also use the prepend and append uh, function of PHP. You can just <laughs> yeah. Well, on dev environments, it's okay. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's a valid use for that. Hmm. For that, don't don't use it in production, please. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely no, not, no. Because not because not for anything else, but there. for this, it's okay. Yeah. Well, for dev environments is great. And put the if around it with a with a profiling cookie with a button. I really like that functionality. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. You make a call to a front end, and the front end makes a call to the back end, and you suddenly don't have a profile because the cookie gets lost. So there are ways around that. I think. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. But speaking of the legacy code and all of that, <laughs> debugging is also a method for you to find if stuff is being called. You turn on the debugger. Put a breakpoint in whatever it is you're testing and go through the, the pages that you think. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you might also find those things. And you might also find a lot of interesting things about your code. Yeah. <laughs> a lot faster than var dump and yeah. that. So. Yeah. <laughs> Die. Yeah. Die, yes. Lots yeah. of you have the new debu debug info uh, magic uh, method now, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the var dumps are still valid. <laughs> <laughs> you can use a mail function, by the way. Just put a mail function in your yeah, yeah. legacy code. Uh, a, file, a file put contents to a temporary <laughs> file. Your <laughs> <laughs> server goes down, but yeah, yeah you just know. Just make sure you're not putting your email there. <laughs> <laughs> sure, go ahead. But use the one yeah, that goes to everyone. Every customer. Yeah. Send yeah. an email to management. They're gonna love it. Okay. Yeah. First, first remove all the function calls and then add the mail function. Yeah. Any other questions or remarks or no? no? Then I'd like to thank you for your time. Uh, I have some useful links, and I'd love feedback. I'd love feedback. The slides are also on joined in. Um, yeah, please. Thank you. Awesome.